prior to us setting up the committee in the Oxford University Hospital, um, we had a weekly um, lunchtime meeting where one of the junior staff would present the cases of the mortality review. The meetings were attended by um, a variety of people, but not a regular group of people, and there was some comments made and discussion of the clinical aspects of the case, but it was uncommon that um, recommendations were taken forward from then or, or put together. The main challenge was I thought that there wasn't really a standardised way that all cases were presented, which meant that parents weren't all being given the same opportunity to have their cases reviewed and to identify whether there were system level changes that contributed to their child's death. Uh, from the experience I'd had before from Australia, where we did set up a, a review committee, one of the advantages was that we could see patterns of things that were emerging and we could also track successes where we had actually managed to, to uh, implement a change, but also um, where the themes were of the same, same areas that were coming up as being problematic. And a lot of those areas would not necessarily mean that the baby would have survived, but it may mean that um, we could have uh, improved the care in some, some aspect. Where we started out is, I think a few of us, not just me, realised that we could do perinatal mortality review better. And so we started by having a meeting with um, the lead obstetric consultant for clinical governance and the head of clinical governance for maternity um, and one of our governance midwives. And between us, we, we discussed the possible formats that the meeting might take. We also drew up a terms of reference for the meeting and um, made a, a plan as to how we could get the process started. And key to the process was actually setting up a database as well so we could keep a, a track of the cases and know what information we had to, uh, core information should be extracted. Time was always a struggle because people are very busy and clinicians have already got a lot of meetings on their plate. And so we needed to find a time which suited uh, the government's team, the perinatal bereavement midwives and also myself and other consultant obstetricians and other senior midwives who may want to be involved. And the time which we've come up with is a Friday afternoon once a month. Um, these meetings, you know, are still you know, not 100% of people who would want to attend the meeting can because there are other clinical commitments going on at that time, but you do have to just make a, a decision as to when the majority can attend. Um, in terms of what's happened to the, exist, uh, the, pre, the, exi, the meeting we had before, uh, that meeting continues and is a teaching forum for junior staff. So there's still an opportunity for the, the juniors to learn, or try to start to learn the skills of presenting these cases, but it's not the only review which happens. I always make sure that I've got a room booked and, and booked in advance and um, so that's really important to have and to have a good relationship with your administrators so they can let you know of a suitable place. Um, I've got a group of email contacts of, of people that come to the meeting regularly and people that I want to come so people, obstetricians, um, consultant neonatologists, um, pathologists and um, the midwives that do our bereavement work. The next thing to do is to make sure that we've got all the cases um, relevant for the meeting. Um, so every month I look through our two trust databases to make sure I've got all the records of the stillbirths and neonatal deaths that happen every month. And then I make sure that I send the agenda out early enough that people can help me enter our cases onto the database. And then prior to the meeting, um, the parents get sent a letter just informing them that we're going to be discussing their baby's case at um, a review meeting. And then afterwards, um, we tell the relevant consultants who that we've reviewed the case and then they have a meeting with the parents and um, feed anything back to them that we've learned. We try and get a range of different people to come that we think are relevant. Um, so we definitely like to have um, neonatologists present if um, we're discussing a neonatal death, um, consultant obstetricians, um, and we're lucky that we've got um, well, that it's well attended by the fetal medicine consultants mm -hmm. and um, by the consultants that do a lot of our scanning. 
um, and prenatal diagnosis. Um, midwives, um, we, especially our bereavement midwife um, and the, our midwife that does all our embrace reporting, um, we like to get her to come um, and if she can. Um, we always invite um, the pathologist to attend, um, ne neonatal nurse practitioners, and we always have someone from our maternity governance team as well. Our meeting is scheduled for two hours um, on an afternoon. We generally have, I'd say, between about four and seven cases, depending on what they are, because you will find that some are more easy to pinpoint a cause of death and don't generate as much discussion as others. Um, so the meeting's chaired by Jane. Um, we always start with um, any minutes from the last meeting and any actions from the last meeting and see if they've been done. Um, we have a projector, so we've already put um, the cases onto our database and then we project them all so uh, everyone can see and it's easier to generate discussion. Um, we also if it, the baby's been admitted to special care and it's been a neonatal death, um, bring up the summaries from the neonatal unit that they use um, and try and get all the pathology reports in advance so we can put them up as well. Um, I think it's really, really important to be organised and to get all your cases and your agenda well in advance. Um, and as I was saying previously about different people talking, I think it's really good if you encourage a variety of people. You might have a different opinion or see things from a different point of view if you're a midwife or a consultant obstetrician. After each meeting, there's a formal uh, minutes of the meeting and report done. Individual feedback is given to clinicians um, who were in charge of the obstetric consultants who were in charge of the care for the women. Um, it, the way that we have come to an agreement in our trust is that because the consultant sees the patient and her, probably her family as well in follow up, um, we leave it in the to the individual consultant, feed that back to the parents themselves. In terms of feeding back to the rest of the department, um, every six months we try and do a summary presentation to the Monday meeting and we also present every six months to our clinical governance meeting as one of the sort of standard reports uh, through the trust. The Monday meeting is also a forum where we can feed back some of our learnings from the Friday committee um, that need to be taken up by the department. Well, the first barriers, I guess, were those some obstetric consultants who, who maybe didn't quite see the need for another committee, or they felt that the Monday meeting was doing its job. But I think after explaining to them, you know, that the outputs from the Monday meeting were really not very structured and, and didn't seem to be moving us forward and, and weren't serving the patients to the best that they could, um, I think they, they all soon actually quite quickly came round and are very supportive now of the Friday uh, meeting process. Um, another sort of barrier that we, we have had here is that uh, particularly the perinatal pathologists are extremely overworked and extremely busy and actually don't have the time to attend our meeting, which is a shame. They have been very helpful in providing um, autopsy reports and, pl and placental histopathology reports before the meeting. So we've got around that that way, but ideally it would be nice to have them, them present at the table. Um, another I guess a barrier that, that we've overcome is actually getting neonatal involvement in the meeting as well because it's typically, um, you know, stillbirths and neonatal deaths are often dealt with by two separate committees but it's been a real bonus for us to have neonatal people present. Um, I think the other thing is just keeping the momentum going is quite challenging and, you know, people are very busy um, and having someone um, in the governance office here who's able to keep the organisational side of things going has been hugely helpful because otherwise it, um, it is a lot of work for one person to do. I think the, the main things I've seen is I think there's more a realisation of what a, a, a thorough review of cases looks like and, and the duty of care which we owe all parents who lose a baby in our trust and so I think the standard of review in terms of the thoroughness that we, we look into the cases has really improved markedly and the profile of the meeting has also continued to uh, improve within the trust and for our parents. 
In terms of changes to practice, we've noticed a few um, recurring themes which have come through, particularly around women who deliver their babies very early, and, and by that I mean extremely preterm babies under 26 weeks, mm -hmm. who, for those who go into spontaneous labour, the most common reason for that is infection, and just making sure that we have systems in place that that infection is promptly recognised and treated when it, when it does occur. And, um, it, it's a challenge and it continues to be a challenge, but the, the meeting process is highlighting how we have a number of similar cases in that in that vein. We also have quite a number of our cases who are referred in from other trusts to this unit because we're a tertiary centre um, and there have been some learnings which were fed back to um, some of the district hospitals as well. The more that you look into cases, the less cases are truly unexplained at the end of the day. Unfortunately, in 2018, there is still a substantial between probably 20 to 30 percent of particularly our late term stillbirths where we don't have um, an explanation from the testing that's been done. Um, one thing that I think um, here we, in the trust we recognise we could do better and hopefully we will in the future is improving the a proportion of women who get a, an autopsy on their baby after birth. Well the long term aim for the service I guess is you know, to provide the highest quality care we can for, for women in our region and women referred to us. Um, what I would like to see for the Perinatal Review Committee is that we set up a standard of review which is integrated not just um, with other departments such as the neonatal department in our hospital but hopefully also integrated with other hospitals in the Thames Valley region and um, so we can make sure that we're all um, able to provide a very high level of robust investigation for parents who lose their babies. Um, one thing which I think we could continue to work on and we want to keep working on is how to improve the access parents have to these review meetings. 